Hey guys, Mike here with Rapid Quants. Today is April 14th, I think. Yeah, April 14th, 2022. And uh, I wanted to post a quick market update because we have now reached a critical threshold in the market. So let's talk about it. Right. Well, last time when I posted an update, we were somewhere on up here, right? and I, I think I might have we might have slipped down here at that point. But the whole idea at that stage was that we would experience a you know a retest, a retest after an, an attempt to break out. In retrospect, and sometimes that's how the brain works, the breakout attempt was sort of weak because we got pulled back fairly quickly, right? I mean, we got pulled back without overcoming this. We got pulled back without even getting close to 52,000, which would have been preferable. But be this as it may, right? There was still the notion at this stage was like, okay, we might go and you might recall that, right? Uh, to like 43,000 and change and then bounce back. But we continued lower and went all the way to into the 39,000s. And that's where we are right now, 39,950. So the sentiment, you know, how many days? One, two, th three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it's two weeks and a few days. So even even two weeks ago, if you run it up, up here, the sentiment was completely different. It was, again, more formal, more greed. And, and within the last two weeks, right, the last special last 10 days has just completely changed. Now we're back in fear mode and we just bounced here, which I think is a very important threshold. Right, this formation right here, I draw a little line. I think this formation is, is quite mature at this point. What I mean by that is that, you know, look, we have we have two bounce backs here, right? two, a big buyer down here, clearly around the 34, 34, 5,000 uh, cluster. And so we bounce back and then, you know, quite, quite quickly advance back higher, which we did here twice already. And we've spent quite a bit of time in this as well now. I mean, I don't know what this drawing tool is always here. Sorry. So if you think about it, right, I mean, this was end of January. And we're still here. Right? I mean, it's it's mid. Tomorrow is the is the um, is the uh, middle of April. So we spent <laughs> we spent like four months in this already, and it's it's been exhausting. And so that definitely is going to affect the psychology of, of of traders, no doubt. Technically speaking, let me let me put this on hold here. Somebody always wants something. <laughs> uh, so technically speaking. Technically speaking, uh, we need to hold this at this point because if we don't hold this, most likely we're gonna advance right through here and retest 35, and then I see very little, very, very little reason why we shouldn't go to 30. So this is uh, this is quite a critical point here, and I'm very curious what as to what happens here. Um, on the upside, I think Ethereum was was sort of um, leading. I mean, it's not exactly strong. This is Ethereum against Bitcoin. And we're going to look at the USD version in a, in, a, in a jiffy here. But it's been leading since we entered, well, with Kryptona since we, we entered here. So we've been gaining, well, we've been gaining against Bitcoin. And implicitly, that means we've been losing less in dollar terms because you know, we've, uh, we, if we're looking at Ethereum USD, yeah, like this. Then yeah, we're down as well, but we're down quite a quite a bit less, as you can tell, right? In dollar terms, so that's a positive. So the system again did the right thing, kept us in the right coin. However, you know, we're still down a bit, of course. You know, it's it's just uh, you know, nature of the beast here. So going back to Bitcoin, I mean, this is going to be a very quick update, right? I mean, this is we need to hold this. And if we don't, we're probably most likely going to revisit this whole cluster on here, and then we're probably going to retest all of this because then we're back in the old in the old mode, right? Here, this is going to be the focus is going to be it's going to shift from from this formation now, which is then history, and also on the way if we ever go, go back up, this this formation would then move this uh, this formation then would 
turn into resistance. So if you're thinking about a scenario and right, potentially, let me draw the right, use the right tool here. How do I get the right tool? Uh, one second. I think here, uh, yep. Nope, that's not it. Uh, that's not, I think it's in here. Yeah, I never find it because of this weird icon here, brush. What I'm looking for is a path or polyline. So let's draw this. <clears throat> So uh, imagine for a second we would slice through here, and you know again it wouldn't. I hope it won't happen, but it's very much a possibility at this stage, right? Much bigger possibility than it was maybe a week or two ago. And then we bounce. Mm -hmm. Then what would happen? Well, we bounce, and we would have to overcome all this. This would be resistance, so this would play out longer, you know, and then potentially work its way up there. So that's one scenario. It's a mild scenario. Of course, the most bullish scenario now is what I hope will happen, which is, you know, maybe scare the children a little bit more, you know, do one of these things and then work its way back up and then maybe do another retest, but then work its way up, something like this. So that's the most more bullish scenario. I, I honestly think we're going to at least see a slice through like this. That would be extremely bullish, actually. It's, it, this is really a big inflection point, this whole formation here, this whole range, because it's really going to determine the, the direction over the, next, uh, over the next month or two. I mean, absolutely. The resolution of this is going to be very, very clear, very, uh, very crucial, I mean. Right. So uh, a very bearish scenario, <laughs> cover your eyes, uh, would be, well, we just go here, uh, me bounce, and then, you know, retest, I don't know, you know, 30,000 or something. We, like we, like we did last, um, you know, or even in the, in the twenty thousands or something, and are potentially flattened out, and that that's really when any any um, any long means <laughs> most of the longs will probably have shaken out. See, lining up with this here, very much possible. It's a possibility. So these are more the like more nightmarish scenario. I I don't anticipate that necessarily being the highest probability right now. I give it like thirty, um, and the remaining thirty thirty is you know. The first two scenarios that I showed you, so it's kind of equally distributed. At this stage, technically speaking, you know, we are, that's where we are. There's, there's really we have enough, we have a lot of context. That's the positive thing is that we have a lot of context. See, we have a lot of context here. So for this to give way, right, for us to really drop uh, below thirty thousand, things would have to get very, really ugly. So I think the possibility of that is fairly low. That that would require like a massive sell-off, and I, I really don't believe this is this is the case right now. So we, but what would actually be, and that's the last thing I want to kind of pass on. If we're getting the scenario that I just outlined, where we like slice through and then snap back, consider this actually very very positive, and uh, I would I would again consider this a, a good buying opportunity if that happens because that would really establish like okay let me finish this formation like something like this right because this would establish you know another that a very strong bias down here right that that especially into institutional players are gonna scream and say okay you know uh, it's all fun and games you know but this is enough uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's punch this thing back up higher very much possibility. In case you have any doubts, these things happen. They do happen. You know, we've got enough big play, and many big players in the space now. Whales now in the space who can definitely um, move the needle when it comes to price action. They don't can they don't really determine the the the, the price uh, on a daily basis, but at the inflection points, they can move the needle and they can you know can they can make an impact at, at inflection points that where it really matters, right? And if they wouldn't step in and buy here, uh, then the whole thing might just slide off the off the plate. Which I think I still give this a little bit of a bias, you know, uh, in terms of the, the possible the possibility of scenarios. It does look scary, I know, but that's sometimes, and that's just a little takeaway for you know for the road. <laughs> in, and when it comes to this kind of price action, um, sometimes bearish things have to happen for bullish things to 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 happen further down the line. A bearish scenario has to happen first. We're, we need to establish more price context here to really once and for all make this a uh, you know the big wall. Establish this as the big wall that that can, that 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 need, would need to be overcome later on the line, and that will discourage uh, short sellers, you know, to to um, to push prices to, uh, down this low because they, they 
would know probably know that you know buyers will just wait and gobble it up down here right so that's kind of part of the uh, psychology we, we're not we're not it's not really um there's less of a play going on when it comes to let's say you know gamma risk and all this stuff because we don't have that really in the, in, in the crypto market yet in terms of like you know expected move and and volatility driven um uh, pr uh trading activity that would cause for instance a particular price level to be magnetic and then um you know like options activity would would really start playing a role because people are you know we're still selling maybe out of the money options and that that's the threshold and then they have to start selling and selling and selling and selling fortunately we're not at that point yet well fortunately but also unfortunately because they can also really provide a bounce in the market right that might some to some of you might be a little bit exotic maybe if you're an options trader you understand what i'm talking about but it, it does play a role but the crypto market hasn't advanced and matured sufficiently enough for yet fully to to that to be a factor uh, at least in like you know april of 2022 the market is growing and three years from now it might be a completely different story but for now we just deal with price action and i think that's you know that's these are the main scenarios that i'm looking at right now and let's keep our fingers crossed and see what happens right over the next the next few days will be crucial so you know I'll, I'll keep you guys updated as usual all right talk to you soon cheers